the universal message of all which is true It's running through me like it runs through you The universal is the message of all which is true It don't matter black or white down with red The universal is the message of all which is true Rebirth across the earth spreads through the crew The universal is the message of all which is true Just share your petty differences and come with me Universal laws align, the true guidelines actually right or wrong in real time. Yeah. Welcome, check it out. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Universal principles that apply to all mankind. An example of how humanity can intertwine and combine with the divine. But over the course of time, Yeshua's teachers have been perverted by the same people they murdered and persecuted the original churches. So, yeah. yeah. So, man, um, Welcome, welcome, welcome to Metaphysical Dynamics. Uh, yeah, I, I. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, sir, having you. May I say, um, we got our guest here, Derek Bartocelli, part of uh, uh, dissolving dissolving the di da, 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 da. <laughs> dissolving the divide um, and awaken your mind podcast and uh he's got uh, several other channels going on right now but i brought him on because he's such a cool cat and uh, um i'd love to have him. um so how you doing brother <clears throat> yeah jungle always a pleasure and uh yeah it's just great to be in contacts and network with you and other cats you know like zerlaf and other folks tal linden and yeah rodney goodwin of course <clears throat> South Exposa with that good old dragon of the white temple. And uh, yeah, <laughs> to break it down, really simple. Yeah, natural law. Um, it's kind of just the, the, the laws and eternal principles that govern existence. You, people can call it karmic law, if that makes sense to people, where it has that causality, the golden rule, and all these things. And yeah, it's like they're non man made. I'm trying to like phrase it other than, you know, the more popular folks that you might hear of, you know, like Mark Passio, which, you know, he has like the best uh, kind of clear cut, dry way of, you know, putting things, you know. And I'm not trying to like supersede, you know, his works at all. Like I've learned it tons from him and like learning his works, you know, what on earth is happening.com, one great work network.com uh to have an art the level of articulation that i heard him speak upon even after hearing you know the david ikes and uh max egan's and michael desarion and, and other folks even a little bit of manly p hall uh the way he put things and framed it was just so riveting if you will <laughs> and revealing but also just straight to the point like this is what it is uh <clears throat> as far as how it also applies to our lives and this is what we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. and i wanted to bring up like more real life examples that you know we can you know see and observe and experience on a daily basis instead of you know if anyone's familiar with uh mark passio maybe you've come across his natural law seminar and uh, yeah, that that was really groundbreaking for me because yeah, what I wanted to say because I need to back it up a little bit just to let folks understand that you know like I had like a really profound awakening and I had like what he would term actually is like a cosmic apology where mm -hmm. I went through like that e extremely profound repentance and just like whole life examination. I had like a crisis of consciousness in a sense, even though. I was in a good place. I was living in Paris. I was married. I had that heart chakra open, but I just felt like I was not meeting my anywhere near my actualized potential of where I, I was at like 27, 28 years old, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, long story short, I had just like a frequency shift type, type of awakening after, you know, plunging down the rabbit holes and like racking my brain and my soul and all these things and really just trying to understand things way beyond what i currently understood and i just had like 
some kind of quantum leap in it was kind of bypassing some of that um grammar to like <clears throat> put words to like this you know abrupt <laughs> in a sense of like understanding of so many things because yeah once i had that you know the light bulb type of thing shit just I don't, it just made sense in so many ways and in, in an ineffable way where I, I couldn't even comprehend, you know, half of it yet. It made sense, you know, on a you know, intuitive level, I guess, you know, that, mm -hmm. that inner eye was really activated. If you will. And this is your awakening to, I guess what some people call the matrix, but like, uh, awakening out of it. And I think you're referring to, and, and that along with that would be, learning and how you got into natural law right like this is kind of like your segue into that yeah and I, the reason why i always refer to my awakening and natural law is because the frequency i shifted towards was just in alignment with natural law cosmic law universal law uh, karmic law because you know one of my main things was to you know uh repay my karmic debt because mm -hmm. i realized you know I, I looked back on my life and I was like, wow, I was so out of alignment. I was like immoral. I used to, you know, have some thievery and that kind of stuff. I, I went to jail a couple of times. I, I, you know, I, I didn't hit like rock bottom, mm -hmm. but I was, you know, on a trajectory to not, you know, like scrape that surface pretty much, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was so lucky to like fall in love and, you know, get whisked away in, in France and all that stuff. And not like I was like a super bad kid and all this stuff. I had like some good stuff. I was in yeah. some of the wrong places at the wrong time. Right. And I just, yeah, had some kind of bad influences a little yeah. bit growing up. I, yeah. A lot of like, people do, right? No, likewise. I mean, definitely appreciate you sharing that. And I can relate because, yeah, you just, are at certain points in your life where you're not aware of the kind of brotherhood you're growing, <laughs> the type of friends, French friends that you have around you and how they're invested in your self-destruction. They're not actually invested in your self-interest and your benefit uh, to benefit your, uh, to improve your quality of life. They're invested in, like I said, yeah, negative things. So, I understand where you're coming from with that, but how has, I guess, like, how did you come across? Okay, you, you explained how you got a, how you came across natural law, um, and how how is I guess you want to give us like the the list of natural laws that that you want to kind of go through uh, in a concise manner, maybe in a nutshell. Yeah, sure. So um, we take it to the Hermetica. We take it to the pillars of enlightenment with the sacred masculine and feminine in respects to, you know, do no harm and take no shit. Meaning we have to defend our property. This is our body. Our soul is in here. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the oscillating life force right here. And, uh, we have to own that and we have to understand and respect that everyone else owns theirs, not just humans as well. All right. <clears throat> Definitely. And that goes with the non-aggression principle, the non-violation principle as well, if we want to take it a little bit further so people understand that, you know, on a deeper level, because, you know, to violate, um, violer, <clears throat> and all these things in French, um, violation, it's the same thing. And uh, um, viol in French means rape, actually. And that's one of the transgressions of just any kind of, type of theft, which, you know, Mark Passio brilliantly broke down as far as, you know, natural law transgressions, which can be boiled down to, yeah, theft. But, you know, within that, <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> there's like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, I guess like tenants or pillars of, you know, these uh, things and they correlate and correspond. I took a uh, what do you call it? Screenshot. Will yeah. Keller posted this right now, <laughs> actually today or yesterday. Of uh... cool. So yeah, you know, you got the pride, gluttony, sloth, lust, anger, jealousy, and greed. Yet, if you want to be a little bit more direct with, <clears throat> you know, what not to do, 
in this life that you know is a violation of natural law of morality objective morality if you will people's universal rights you know if you commit these things onto other people you're breaking natural law which is murder assault rape theft trespass coercion and deception you know like hiding information from people to you know have some kind of advantage over people right <coughs> so, and we see this in daily life all the time. We have, we have, you know, these structures of in chains of command and information and the trickle down stuff. And some corporations and businesses have to run that way and whatever the fuck and start quote unquote have to sometimes. Like you're on a need to know basis and you don't need to know type of thing. Yeah. And I wonder what that model really stems from because I've seen you now I've worked in a lot of places and I've seen similar patterns. I've seen folks and like tried to read up and research because I wanted to own a restaurant myself of how to, you know, do something better and innovate the game where, you know, everyone's on the same level of, you know, there's not just like the head honcho and, you know, folks down below and all that stuff because, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you talked about the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. You can take that to the macrocosmic level. Uh, you have the, <clears throat> the top capstone of the capstone cabal of the pyramid of control, manipulation, all that shit, right? Or, you know, you want to break it down and call it a tesseract or a Borg or a cube with the whole transhumanist bullshit, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're the holders of all, you know, as much knowledge as, as whatever. That's why shit is occulted because, you know, folks at the, you know, bottom lev levels, they're on that need to know basis. So all they need to know is, you know, uh, what tools it takes and yada yada and, and a little bit of monetary motivation to help construct the fucking matrix prison that we're fucking living in type of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Like that's how you're saying that's how it's constructed right now. Right. To a good degree. And that's just, you know, the basis of how mind control works. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting how um, you mentioned deception being a part of the like, uh, next to coercion, but deception to like keep away information to kind of have power over somebody else and control them maybe, or you might not even think in terms of like a having ill will against somebody, but even when it comes to like certain personal narcissistic behavior tendencies that we all might carry to some varying degree, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person per se, or you're a capital N narcissist, but it's, it can be slippery sometimes, like not being aware of like your own, like, you know, motivations of why you're doing something. So I think that's interesting too. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, Is I see the deceptive part, you know, kind of like that more sneaky insidious side and the coercion is more like threat of violence if you do, do not do this type of thing like more direct yeah. like in your face type of shit you know kind of like how law enforcement can work and, and that kind yeah. of stuff and you know it's just amazing agents it's in the matrix those monkeys the flying monkeys right <laughs> anyway. yeah it's just amazing how it can be it's so socially uh, accepted that we've signed on to this social contract where, you know, um, we've given our, given our power away to the authorities, the authority figures that literally can lock us up, throw away the key just based on suspicion alone. And that's not even fair without due trial or anything. It, what's it's completely, you know, against natural law, you know, violating our free, our freedom um not just to be freedom to be assholes but freedom as in like you know without being just to be unbothered really that's all we want i think if i could speak on the whole of the you know a lot of us at, at least like all of us i think can agree that that's all we really want is to be left alone and not uh, not really be fucked with or bothered like by um, anyone um, violating, stepping over boundaries, things like that. Um, I'm not, uh, <laughs> and it's not like you're doing. We're we're not even doing anything wrong. You know, preaching about natural law, preaching about like 
breathing fresh air, <laughs> ingesting healthy foods and, you know, staying healthy, having a healthy mindset, you know, all those things are not crimes. So please someone tell me how that even became a criminal act and, and justifies, you know, law and order to lock you up, you know, justifies them to come in and, and, and deem you as like some crazy person when you're just talking about healthy things. So no, I, like I don't know. Time. And I felt <laughs> like I was kind of long winded a couple of times, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, to answer your question, we live in an ass backwards world where all this stuff, right is wrong, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> but the fact that <clears throat> the, um, you know, the law enforcement and the government that and all that stuff and everything, uh, the fact they exist and we're, we're paying for that to exist and we're holding it up right that's a violation of natural law right then and there because you know through taxation and all that stuff what are they doing any kind of mandate any any kind of jurisdiction sometimes or you know they're telling you you cannot cross here because you know we created inv invisible lines or uh what's that one thing um no territories or you mean like um you mean like territories I'm or speaking more or of like, you know within a nation and you have you know certain kind of like in america where if you cross texas to oklahoma you know you can have sex with a goat but not a donkey or some you know what i mean like some weird ass whatever the uh, fuck kind of shit the hell is going on who the fuck made these rules what the fuck was going on in their mind when yeah. they fucking wrote that shit on paper or papyrus or whatever the fuck but you know, like, exactly. <laughs> did exactly. that need to be written down? Like, seriously, like, people were actually doing that shit back in the day, like for reals. It's insane. Is that? Yeah. And then there's so many crazy laws out there that people deem as holy, but they're not even there. I'm not. See, I'm I'm. Law and order is such a broad concept because, yeah, ideally, if we were an evolved species, the thing is we were never allowed to be left alone to our own devices, were we? I mean, like without being tampered with, uh, without these like controllers on top of us. Well, we maybe there was a time and a place, maybe if you want to refer back to like millennia ago and in, in, in the golden age or whatever, uh, that's fine. But I'm talking about like, in the immediate circle that we're living in uh these controllers have always intervened and, and basically thought for us and told us that told themselves that they're the holy ones to rule over us because we're too stupid and if we are left to our own devices we'll rip each other apart so there has to be law and order but the things i get what well, i guess what i'm getting at is like on some level there's a, there's a conflict because if you just erased all law and order right now, there probably would be a lot of chaos and like people just abusing, they would abuse natural law uh, right from the get go as, and so it's, it's just like, I guess Passio was saying that like the more uh, moral a society is, the more free it is and the less moral a society is, the less free it's going to be. So it's not, it's not one of those things where we can just erase and argue for no law and order because I feel like that would be kind of silly or irrational. But but I think what you're getting at is a healthy and good point, which is, <clears throat> you know, what we should be ideally striving for is to be self-sustaining, self uh, to be sovereign individuals, right? Yeah, and just not I, being I, held under duress and coercion because, you know, oh, if if I wanted to, you know, mm. smoke a, a plant or whatever, I've been to jail, I've been barred from a country, I had my life kind of ruined because yeah. of certain things. And for what exactly? Now it's legal. But yeah. They said, oh, back when it was illegal, you did this and we're never going to forget about it. Yep. Like, what the, really? Like, that's so, so that's, a, you know, this prohibition, whatever the fuck all these things taxation and even borders i mean like i'll get to this later but you know just like even like all these invisible lines of nations and all this stuff i mean it's claiming ownership over someone else's
body saying you cannot go here or there and whatever. You yeah. know, like I mean, like trespassing on private property. That's one thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I feel like yeah, some some nations do need some border control, especially just where things are right now. And how are we going to have a modern application of trans transitioning to a more sovereign nation and that kind of stuff? Where it's like, and it's not like we're going to be like, okay, government, you're just gone now. All these people are just going to like crawl inside a cave and do nothing anymore. The military industrial complex, they're going to do what now? And with any other military in any other nation, what would they do if not everyone in the world is going to follow sweet to natural law? All of a sudden, you know, it, there could be a hundred mon monkey effect. We cannot, you know, rule that out. Right. That cool positive domino effect. Yet, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of draconian ass motherfucking shit going on. And going oh, yeah. back to what you're saying, yeah, since, you know, antiquity beyond millennia, um, the reason why there were these monarchs and other people that, you know, thought they were, you know, the ruling bloodlines of whoever the fuck kind of hybrid, you know, ancestral ass, whatever the fuck go, yeah. goes yep. on with that reptilian side of, you know, the dark occult uh, type of whole domination and control shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so they were the folks that I, I believe, you know, who instilled these systems and kept everyone dumb and kept everyone under this mind control yeah. uh, idea that of, you know, believing in false authority, whether it be through religion or government and all, all these things. And uh, just like really sequestering all the proper knowledge that people needed to, you know, have to ha be activated and have that sovereignty within themselves. But no, they yeah. were babbling like babies in the fucking land of Babylon, right? <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> so somewhere down the line, I wonder, it's just like, <laughs> it's just crazy to think that at one point it was all good. And then somewhere down the line, some envy, jealousy started happening. And then like, you know, um, coercion deception all this stuff started creeping in because people wanted to accumulate more and more power more and more dominance over their next their their fellow human being and that's where it makes a lot of sense with this idea that it it's not a humanitarian it's not coming from a humanitarian spirit of people looking out for us they're not really looking out for us they're they're um if it takes sort of an alien consciousness to be able to want to dominate over this type of in a predatory way over our species and genocide a species as well like that's not human that is not human the human qualities that i'm familiar with are the things that the tenants that you mentioned and also the principles that you mentioned and also the you know principles of compassion and, and higher love agape love like we were talking about so i where is this cold hearted, cold blooded, uh, so psychopathic, uh, consciousness coming from, which is the, which is, you know, basically at the top of, um, the top of the pyramid, you know, the top of, uh, the ruling class that's in control of the authority, uh, organizations and all that. So, yeah. And even, you know, you've seen some graphics, they would even put it above the capstone, you know, kind of like that the luminescent, whatever the fuck, and all that stuff. And, you know, okay. what is up in the ethers, right? The lower, upper astral, whatever the fuck's in the middle and all that shit. Yeah, that... <laughs> so, with the Metatronic reversals, right? It's, like, parasitic by nature. They need to feed off of other life force energy in order for them to fucking keep functioning because they, you know, cut themselves off from source as they did with us since the fall of Atlantis. So, mm -hmm. we're on this, you know, uh, kind of, like, things need to be consumed in order to sustain our own life force energy. You know, think so, about back in the days in other realms where they don't even have a digestive system within their body because they don't consume other life forms. They don't need to. They have that self-perpetuating life force energy within themselves because they have more than just two strands of DNA and that kind of shit. You know, there have been folks that yeah. have been speaking about this for years who have been having activations, you know, like on all these things. And, Definitely would like to hear more about that on another yeah. note, for sure. So that's kind of like what I've kind of felt, of, had a decent taste of that, you know, back in like 2012.
Wow. Wow. But you're just like thriving off of like, you know, uh, minimal food and uh, veg. You said you're a vegetarian and uh, sunlight, basically, like and, and exercising and water, pure water and things like that. Yeah, yeah just everything really. was just online on like a higher level than yeah. ever before and just felt like it's funny you the say throat that. chakra like really just opened up uh really be, wow. beyond what i could even like speak upon before <laughs> like, yeah like having that confidence of self like definitely yeah well it's interesting also because like i had that similar i would say like experience in terms of high energy activation back in 20 12 to 2015 i was like the strongest i was ever physically i had this like mental clarity of like felt like i was tapping into every realm possible and then like now i am on, on a higher level even I, I keep growing i keep developing but there there's been some things where there's been an energy shift definitely you could feel it how it's been you can feel the energy shift from 2008 you can feel the energy shift from 2012 and you can feel the energy shift from 2016 and now into 2024 it's just different energy each each one um each era or whatever so anyways yeah like how um how applicable is natural law in our daily lives i guess is and here's the thing, like, it's very applicable. I, I want you to answer this, this question. But on top of that, the second question would be, um, well, there's a there's a I, there's a notion that like, natural law is kind of like common sense, you know, what I mean, a lot of people be like, why does it need to be emphasized, but it, at the same time, common sense is not common. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> would you agree or disagree with that? Maybe? How could I disagree, especially when the great Manly P. Hall said decades ago, at least, that there's, you know, up up to like 8 billion people breaking natural laws, like on a daily basis. Wow. They don't have that proper moral compass, which again is, you know, like that activated heart. Mm -hmm. And that's just like things that I just like felt intuitively, you know, on a just like that connected level and realizing that, okay, we all are connected and you know, what I'm doing upon others like affects me. I felt like direct karma sometimes, even like my mental state, right? Cause we got to work through the hermetica on a daily basis because every day we're dealing with our mind state and all these things, yeah. which is yeah. mentalism. The first cosmological principle where all is from the mind. It all depends about your state of mind. And what are you projecting from your mind field into the reality field, that kind of stuff. What is your inner, uh self-talk and, and thoughts and all that stuff and how are you able to kind of bypass some bullshit trains of thoughts and you know like imagine you're in like a metro station right and you're trying to get to you know some certain places there's a bunch of you know trains going wherever the fuck you ain't mm -hmm. gotta hop on that shit you can see where it's going you know you right can observe these things right does that make sense yeah it's a really good reminder to use that analogy Cause like a lot of times we do get caught up in the in the traffic that's inside of our heads <laughs> it's like the all this information traffic and and also the worlds that we plug ourselves into so yeah that's a really good reminder um thanks man um so like would you refer to natural laws like law of mentalism law of correspondence law of rhythm uh cause and effect uh, was polarity, uh, gender, and is that six of them? Yeah. You say vibration also? Uh, vibration is the one. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. that's after correspondence. Right. That's that comprises the the basic seven hermetic principles, and then you know there's the generative principle, or you mentioned care earlier, and that's. Uh -huh like the generative principle from that oscillating life force energy pumping from your first oh. eye, you know, oh. definitely. And, uh, but there's, yeah. there's more to natural law than just the hermetica, you know, people cannot be hung up on that because ultimately like in like, okay, like, okay. How many people have you said so like, okay, I, I know the hermetica man. Yeah. But 
how aligned are you to that and how much of that is in your awareness in like part of your daily operation like your fucking life depends on it type of shit yeah you know what i mean and just like oh, your yeah. well-being also rather oh and yeah around so, immediate environment type of stuff and how that shit is rippling out and how yeah. you have the power to make that ripple uh extend yeah. right yeah yep it's so different than just watching you know you can make as many videos or listen to as many videos as you want on natural law and still not have it integrated inside of your being. And I definitely find myself slipping in and out of it at times, but uh, I try to keep it, you know, definitely in check. But, uh, but yeah, living it is a whole nother experience. And like you said, you do have control once you actually are aware of it to project it inwards and, uh, and outwards like uh, what what realms you're activating or opening what portals you're opening up as you're walking through those portals yeah oh yeah i wanted to tell you a story real quick of how you know this instant karma you know happened for me with this you know because yeah I, w I was awakened i bypassed some stuff i still had a lot of inner work to do i still mm -hmm. had a lot of self-mastery and this is like an ongoing thing with everyone there's no arrival point like something exposed likes to say a lot Mm -hmm. which you know i totally agree with because you know like we're, we're operating on the 3d level and we're operating on you know like two strand dna and whatever is not really connected in the brain as far as you know functionality wise on you know like what are we using like 10 percent scientists mm -hmm. have said for however long like our mind power i think we use like yeah all of our brain but like only 10 percent of them are mind power or something like that yeah, so just think about that right there and how that applies to mentalism. Like, what the fuck? So there's so many people operating off of, you know, not even uh, able to get out of the first gate uh, correctly. Mm -hmm. So this is the fucking reality we're placed in, unfortunately. It's a fucked up situation, right? So yeah. anyways, um, <clears throat> what I've noticed, you know, what, from like 2012, I was working in restaurants that were kind of stressful in, in Paris and stuff and even uh, moving to the southern France uh sometimes i'd just be like flustered whatever and i'd be like ah oh, shit what the fuck nah, 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 nah. right mm -hmm. once i started doing that i noticed like boom like i would either break something or cut myself or make a mistake or whatever oh, the fuck. Yeah. you know what i mean you mentioned that uh-huh oh i have okay yeah so that was just like such a shocker and like uh another like wakey wakey type of thing like hey man you got to get your fucking mind straight type of thing and like you got to master these situations and get over this shit and, you know, calm the fuck down. Like, it's not the end of the world just because, you know, whatever the hell, right? Like, <laughs> and how, how, how was I corresponding within myself and how did that just, you know, relate to the, you know, from the micro to the macro okay. in a sense? And, and how did I look in front of customers or whatever, right? Sometimes, you know, like so, yeah. there's so many things to consider with that. And like, I, so obviously I wasn't on a good vibration because, shit was breaking or whatever the not like i was a, a fucking wreck all the time or whatever but i just noticed certain times a couple you know, Definitely. right yeah uh, uh, you should please please continue with that because I, I was gonna ask you to give examples of each law i mean <laughs> for people the layman you know that doesn't know about natural law what oh yeah yeah sure so with the with that of, workflow i wasn't always in the rhythm you know i, I had a a learning curve and language barrier at the same time you know i wasn't mastered in you know the french language still in uh and all this stuff mm -hmm. and uh i was able to find my groove though you know and uh i able to flip the script on the mental and uh the linguistics you know as far as like my communication which is also part of the law, law correspondence you know what are we doing right now we're corresponding right yeah so uh what i did because you know like in my french co-workers would be around and listen to me and and hear me say ah oh, fuck shit whatever sometimes and they would just you know they'd love to just repeat it you know kind of like on some monkey see monkey do shit <laughs> and uh that for whatever reason that would not sit well with me it would kind of like you know keep that fire of frustration burning a little bit so mm. so i was like all right I had a pep talk with myself a couple of times and I was like, you got to stop saying fuck and all this stuff. It's just like you're throwing out these negative vibes, right? The bad vibrations, whatever. Even though catharsis has its fucking places for sure, right? 
Mm -hmm. But we can't just, you know, throw out these things all willy nilly all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially in like public places, whatever. Uh, so anyways, uh, so I replaced, you know, you know, swear words with, I was just like, monkeys. Mm -hmm. I would just say monkeys because, you know, I was trying to get rid of that monkey mind virus type of shit. That was that's, just getting me all flustered. And like, it literally like released something and like, it'd make me laugh in like, stressful situations that kind of stuff so i was able to like flip the script on that find my own rhythm and work, <laughs> uh, within the rhythm of you know the workplace and all that stuff and um definitely and yeah balancing the hemispheres of the brain right the mm -hmm. the logic the masculine and the the more creative the intuitive feminine side so that's definitely. the the law of gender more like mental gender if you will definitely and uh, yeah, the cause and effect. I mean, like that's the cause. Oh, you saw like, you know, what I mentioned or maybe vividly mentally so. <laughs> Me breaking shit in the restaurant. Not like it was like a everyday thing, like like I said, but yeah. <laughs> that's just funny <laughs> shit. <laughs> Thinking about how people are going to hear this, uh, listening to it, whatever. <clears throat> yeah, no. <laughs> it was more like I was bartending. I was washing hundreds of glasses a day, hundreds a day, kind of thing. You know that that kind of shit. So yeah, yeah. things are bound to slip sometimes, whatever. And yeah, anyways. <clears throat> and over here yeah, in France, man, they kind of they almost have you working like a two man job for like a one person salary. Sometimes. Oh wow! So, yeah, yeah, that's funny because they even I learned a lot for that though. Huh? What's that? I learned a lot through that, though. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. And yeah. here, actually, in America, in the United States, people don't like to work outside of their pay grade. <laughs> they won't do anything outside of their little box. It's hard mm -hmm. enough to get anybody to, like, you know, take the extra step to bridge the gap. People, it's almost like, it's weird. This is a tangent, but, like, it's weird that people won't even, it's like they've been, been conditioned to not do things that they're not being paid for. <clears throat> and that, that causes people that tr that mentality translates over to like other things. I think, I don't know. What do you, I mean, that that's a different tangent, but since you brought it up, work, work, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, totally. but that corresponds. Like, I think you're talking about correspondence and uh, how we talk to ourselves and, um, what kind of vibration, that we're attracting or putting out. So after that, then vibration, uh, would that be, so there's mentalism, correspondence, vibration, um, polarity. All right. So here's what the vibration, if you will, like my anger and frustration, whatever that energy <clears throat> in my hands, you know, when I was like, I remember like, I got a scar right here. Yeah. Oh, Oh, I remember, sure. like, I was just, it was at the end of a shift, and I just, like, couldn't wait to get off of work, you know, boss and whoever's just, you know, talking, whatever. I'm just like, man, whatever the fuck. This and that. And, like, just those neg negative vibes from my hands might have transferred into the glass, and it, like, broke mm. in my hand and mm. sliced my thumb. Yeah, that's... Oh, could be yeah. a theory. Could be, you know what I mean? But, you know, no, what, no. Is, what are we all around? What is life? energy vibration energy. frequency right mm -hmm. yeah no one could deny that we are bio um uh was it biomagnetic <laughs> bioelectric magnetic beings so <clears throat> yeah electromagnetic that's you know the masculine and feminine electromagnetic yeah yeah for sure yeah and like so i have an example same thing like with the negative vibe type of situation with my previous marriage i was like um a lot of fighting arguing and i remember pretty vividly one situation uh when we were arguing my ex my ex and i <coughs> excuse me um there was a picture on the on the uh dresser behind us and then it just like it wasn't near the ledge or anything but it just fell and then it shattered. It was a picture of her and I and the dog. 
it just shattered. And that was like at the tail end of our, our, our marriage too. And then she also, you know, I don't want to air dirty laundry, but basically there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of negative things that were happening, but that was at, at the peak of like our argument that happened. So it was very interesting. And that symbolic. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what about um, the next one? How's that? Uh, is that cause and effect or is that? Well, I mean, I, I ran through the gamut already, you know. Oh, right. Well, let's read it again. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Or uh, we can, you know, find a different, you know, situation or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. A different example of, I mean, I don't think anyone that needs to go through what cause and effect means. All right. Let's say, you know, I mentioned the subway or whatever. <clears throat> let's take it, you know, let's take a physical trip. You know, I was in Paris. I was I was doing that stuff, and uh, I noticed. Um, <laughs> and afterwards, I was like, "Dude, I can't do this shit anymore." Because it was just, you know, I got my kicks riding riding a bike in the city. It was awesome. But uh, before that, I took the subway for about a, a year and a half, and yeah, I kind of noticed, you know, the long faces of people just uh, going through the daily grind, you know, up in the hamster wheel rat race type of thing, and not really feeling their situation all that much. Yeah. Yeah, for me, at the same time, like, I was in love, um, you know, in a new environment, that kind of stuff, and just working in a new place is kind of cool. And for me, like, work is whatever, you know, like, the, the mentality about it. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the whole, the monetary, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The monetary motivation. Uh, you asked a question about that earlier, remember? Yeah, yeah. Um like what are people's motivations when they're yeah like people aren't trying to you know do a whole lot if it's below the pay grade or whatever the fuck oh oh i see yeah 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 they're not trying to they won't work outside of their they won't do or take the extra step without getting paid for it Go right, outside yeah. and I, i've noticed that uh, just with you know people's body language uh, with some coworkers working around and that kind of stuff and uh yeah it's like you can call team spirit or whatever the fuck um I do respect folks that are going to like take a stand and be like, well, you're asking me for all these other things. And yet, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, should we I talk was... about a raise sometime soon? That'd be cool. That kind of stuff. See, yeah, there's respect. different approaches. You know, people have to, don't have to act all self entitled. Right. Right. Uh, we've all had to take one for the fucking team. You know, there's certain situations that call up for more help than, you know, normally asked for whatever the fuck people need to get over that. And you know what, but, uh, so what I noticed of, you know, what had a negative effect on me when I started having those thoughts about that a little too much is that, uh, yeah, it, it just totally ruined my attitude and mood, uh, for, for a good while throughout the day of just like, yeah, I gotta do this. And, and, like, ah, oh, fuck, like, you know, I should have had a raise like months ago or whatever the fuck. And, you know, they're making me stay for, I, I, I got to stay longer because someone else is, you know, coming in late or whatever the fuck. You know, there's like all these things. And um, whenever like the idea of, you know, I'm not getting paid enough came to mind. That's just the, the gist of it. You know, negative uh, vibes just, you know, crept up into my, my fucking minefield and, and all that stuff. Does that make That's, sense? Yeah, yeah. So this like connection with money and not getting paid enough and the neg and the negative vibes type of thing. Yeah, and so <clears throat> we can look at this a couple ways, right? Um, we could wonder how much of that, you know, corresponds to like the law of Gebel, right? Equal energy exchange. If people have that righteous indignation of, hey, like I'm actually worth this much, but I'm like getting that, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Definitely, you know, or, you know, it could be someone, uh, who's, you know, been kind of holding back and mad at themselves ultimately because they just haven't uh, taken the proper time, energy approach to, you know, talk with and negotiate with, you know, the manager to get that raise or whatever the fuck or, you know, take a stand for themselves instead of just kind of like keeping it to themselves and, you know, being pissed off about it and uh, holding that victim card, if you will. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I had a thought about that and then it just slipped away. But yeah, I think it's justified to stand up for yourself and to fight for what your value, value for value um, type of thing. But it's the self-centeredness and the entitlement that gets in the way and that kind of like ricochets back at you too that type of, if you're like that then you're going to attract people that are like that that are going to be taking advantage of you trying to do you wrong and not look out for you you're going to surround yourself and that's why this whole mentality of where i think where the doggy dog world comes from is like oh well someone's going to get over on me i better get over on them first and you're just really creating that type of vibration right yeah so <clears throat> Yeah, just, you know, whether at the workplace or at home or whatever, you know, having just like your moral compass set on right action, right thought, right choices, right thinking and all these things. It's going to really help the flow in navigation uh, through our, you know, moment to moment situations and whatever yeah. comes up, we can work on magic, you know, in a much more easier flow, you know, we could see magic as you know chaos management if you will as well oh. you know that that alchemy involved even if it's just for like you know a split second or whatever you're you're you know someone has a need you're meeting that need or there's a problem that arises you find a solution and bada bing folks got to improvise and step up and and do what it takes and hopefully do it with grace and uh with that moral uh certitude of where it's you know really for the win-win Mm -hmm. Where everyone's, you know, you know, needs are met at the end or whatever, right? There's no like bad compromise on either side or whatever, right? I kind of, me personally, I have a question. I guess I could ask you and how to maybe uh, gauge where. See, like. It's interesting how, um, let's say, I could come forward with like a, a good intention, and let's say I see a, an organization that's dysfunctional, and I come through, and I could be, you know, even dogmatic about like the way that I want to see change, and then that can, like, like, for example, I might tell one person that's a leader, like, you got to stop hanging around people like this because they're just gonna like. Um, you know, attract a certain type of energy. And then like that can come across like, like heavy or uh, we got to stop using labels. We got to stop, you know, like telling someone like that and I could be dogmatic about it. And then like, you Are you know, talking about like, Hey man, I don't want to hang out with those low vibe dudes or whatever. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Like I uh, try to get labels, right? Use myself as an example. Like oh, I used to, hang around these types of people and i'm telling you it's not a good not a good look and it's not gonna go well and that's why i step away i i play it low key i'm um you know and i think that like you know it's good to consider those types of things and um although they might be great people and blah blah and you you have to color this whole picture for the person that you're talking to they're not really ready to take that make that change they're kind of on the cusp of making that change but by me projecting out that type of teaching to them and if i come on too strong what kind of vibration am i sending out and i i often question that within myself like am i being too dogmatic am i actually having an ulterior motive in what i'm saying because i'm actually trying to go for something that's good but it seems to be coming out like in an inverse way <laughs> i don't know like what do you think about that yeah yeah i know what you mean and i've been there it's just being uh just way too blunt or cut and dry with certain things and not i guess uh reading the level of awareness or energies in the <clears throat> or whatever right mm -hmm. so not really and honestly it's not everyone can can do this right people feel held back on their own uh, authenticity if they have to like dumb it down for other people or feel like they're walking on eggshells even right. though it's not necessarily the case i just feel like you know it's 
to throw a little slang. It's like different strokes for different, different folks in a sense. And uh, you can kind of reach people in a way to work your magic, right? And your way with words and uh, improvising to whatever specific audience, even if it's just like one, two people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, audience use that loosely, right? But, you know. Right. right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that's also good to be aware of, like, even if you're trying to do good and trying to, um, it's just like any of the people that we sometimes refer to as being dogmatic with within a religious sense, you can also be dogmatic in a natural law sense or in any, any kind of sense, whether it's truth or not. So, um, yeah, no, honestly, that, uh, <clears throat> provides a proper opportunity to mention that, hey, folks, you know, natural law is not a fucking religion. It's not a cult. It's not Darwin's theory of, you know, the natural order of things or, you know, the survival of the fittest and whatever the shittest uh, theory revolving around that kind of stuff. You know. So, yeah. Disclaimers. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, wondering, did you have another uh, question or should I go? Because, <laughs> fuck, man. I, uh, yeah, I totally I wanted to mention, uh, not like I need to go back there, but, uh, I didn't want to leave folks, you know, thinking like, hey, man, this guy was talking about, you know, taking a metro in Paris, you know, and trying to yeah, apply the cool. hermetic to that shit. The hell, dude. This yeah, guy for, thinks he had his for, mind right up in there. And, uh, yeah, just, you, you step into the metro, right? You just see around and just peep the scene real quick. And uh, I just try to make sure I get on the on the thing, especially during rush hour. And uh, yeah, like for me, <clears throat> all right, what is the mind in mentalism and all these things? And like our perception of, of uh, our immediate surroundings and, and all that stuff, right? I feel like, you know, we have a uh, different types of intelligence, right? There's like a spatial intelligence and there's, you know, like a chronological intelligence and, and all these different things that we can consider at any given moment or whatever. Right. And so that involves so many different things with the Hermetica, like spatial intelligence and understanding you know, like, okay, you're, you're in a train and it's going to be moving in a second. And just the level of awareness needs to be there. And it ain't got to be on that Sherlock Holmes level, but <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be that correspondence of any kind of communication from the, the train or whatever. And just like the noise of the movement and the velocity from that, <clears throat> um, that you, you're going to hear. And you can recognize certain patterns. And with those patterns, there can be, you know, rhythms and vibration that you can pick up on and uh, get in tune with that. Like for me, I was uh, really down with uh, like getting a little workout on the subway, you know, like not, I would love to stand up and, you know, like that awareness, like I wouldn't be one to like grab a seat especially if I was by myself, if I was with my wife, you know, I'd let her have a seat. I'd just, you know, be standing next to her or whatever. And if I was sitting down, of course, you know, like the gesture is to, you know, have a lady take a seat. Ah, oh, shit. Where'd you go? <laughs> so, yeah, I would let, you know, women have a seat, of course, especially if they're pregnant and all this stuff. So, yeah, like... <clears throat> respects to gender and all that stuff and um <laughs> you know with the whole causality cause and effect uh how are we applying all the rest of the hermetic principles because it's in order on <clears throat> for a good reason <clears throat> i'm not gonna <clears throat> get into all those dynamics but uh you know to really get all these other things down and line them up like dominoes almost which is you know cause and effect is depicted a lot like, you know, that cause and effect, right? Um, it's, you know, part of this mastery of ourselves and the Hermetica that we can be much more 
of the causal point to the effects in our life and uh, environment around us and the people around us and being able to work our magic a little bit and also not being caught up in you know the the everyday rat race sad face um looking like they ended up in last place or whatever the fuck kind of, kind of thing and uh they got those negative vibes and people those can be contagious and they can you know drag other people down but if you're in your own proper mind state and all these other things you know you are not being affected by those causes if you will things to consider definitely yeah it's almost kind of crazy because like we enact our own behaviors against ourselves it's it's interesting how like we can you know the phrase like we're we're all walking um hypocrites in our own way and it's like we why do we do this you know we we act in ways that are self-destructive but we know better and you could be the most sophisticated person in these arts and sciences but still have your own bullshit to do with it which everyone does but not to focus on that but just saying like it's interesting how we can be kind of like schizo like not literally obviously <laughs> but like there's a schism there in in the human psyche and i just i think it's good to also keep that in check um but yeah i mean i definitely wish i had more clear questions for you um yeah. But, but shoot him anyways, man. It's all good. I'll, I'll wing it. <laughs> like uh, the, yeah. the feathers of my eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay, so can you explain maybe how, like, let's say you live a life <clears throat> embodying natural law, and how does that connect to the scales of Maha? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like what is, is uh-huh what is, can you explain for people like what is the scales of my aunt and 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 uh how that connects right the scales my aunt uh my aunt is you know egyptian goddess um allegorically if you will which represents uh is justice that's also aligned with the justice card of the tarot deck where it's holding the scales with the you know sword of truth and the scales are perfectly balanced and that needs to be the case or your heart needs to weigh less than a feather otherwise you're gonna you know not get through the to the halls of mente you're gonna go back into the underworld and back up in here to repeat some lessons that were not properly learned because you were out of alignment you were not uh properly living in alignment with natural law in regards to Mayat, which, you know, you were not living a just life. You were not balanced. You were, you know, you know, you could consider it karma, you know, like you were, you had too much karmic debt, man. Yeah. Uh, and it had to, you know, eat you. And Anubis wasn't, you know, going to see you through that shit, man. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So if we live more balanced in in using all those tools of natural law then we can hopefully uh not only uh have our heart as light as as light of a light as a feather but also get into the halls of amente but like it's not just easy for anyone to just walk through right um that's why the alchemical process is vital and that process is not fucking easy either. You got to really burn your fucking your bullshit shadow, whatever the fuck is going on, and the, all the falsehoods and all these things that, you know, like on a daily, there's all these things still in reality that are trying to hook in on us and drag us the fuck off our path and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So for us to, you know, just maintain that steady alignment and path work, you know, it, it does take a good amount of discipline and, and all these things. It can be quite, I'm not going to say joyful, but uh, I don't know. There's like a sense of relief once you've been able to cross a certain threshold with uh, being able to break certain uh, 
boundaries within yourself or you know level up within yourself or Definitely. does that make sense i know it's like really no it does vague, but uh <laughs> no i know exactly what you're talking about because i've personally lived through that too and i feel it's very fulfilling when and and you 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 have the you're at a point where you have the gratitude and the the appreciation you know for for life and every moment to moment so yeah uh, uh, especially yeah overcoming a great battle inside of yourself is is very fulfilling so mm. um but like it doesn't just come easy like we were talking about so um for those that aren't familiar with natural law and and what the purpose of living a life conducting oneself uh embodying natural law in their in their personal life it is to basically evolve your soul and transcend past our own personal limitations i think and uh not only that but keep things in harmony and balance with with uh life around us would you think about would you agree with that yeah yeah for sure and uh yeah just real quick to back it up uh to finish off on that last point of you know like what is you know certain barrier look like we can look at you know how it, and i've been there too you know like living life in kind of like this survival mode you know not really sure of yourself or you know your near future and that kind of stuff mm -hmm and uh possibly lying to yourself or you know you're not trusting many people around you you're not surrounding yourself with the good people i guess or you know folks that you have suspicions on so mm -hmm. with people that have all these doubts about certain people like uh hey sometimes you got to bust that hermit card out and you know retract and recalibrate and reevaluate of you know what exactly are you doing and, and what are you actually spending your time on and with and w what's the level of quality what is it actually bringing into your life what is it doing for others is there an equal energy exchange going on with that uh do they actually have love and respect for you uh do you even have love and respect for yourself you know like yeah. questions you know like, <clears throat> very valid that's huge what you just said oh cool i think yeah. a lot of people are exper experiencing that on this planet they're they're just you know not only unsure of themselves but they're unsure of the people that they keep around hermit. them <laughs> what's that i said i got my hermit no I, uh, hermit card right there on the top right yes and that there's when you need to do that that's such a such a groundbreaking uh period in your life yes so, yeah thank i really appreciate you coming on and uh yeah, talking about this with me because it's uh it's helping me also clarify it in my mind as i'm talking about it and also uh just yeah rehearsing it is is important to me so oh, yeah man i appreciate that and honestly i really appreciate you inviting me on to talk about this because it gives me an opportunity to yeah, bring up things that I've never really spoken about, like in this type of uh, mm -hmm. reference context. And um, yeah, I like it. I think uh, it just helps one understand how the laws of the universe function and we get to understand ourselves more and having these things, you know, considered, especially in the future, just helps us being more powerful in in mastering the moment and it's not to master shit over other people it's for me it's like mastering yeah. the moment is to spread life and joy and positivity that kind mm -hmm. of shit. but also you know avoiding all the other shit and being aware of, of other stuff and catching any kind of manipulative stuff coming our way as well yeah. right so there's got to be that self-defense principle with that you know feminine right no, definitely. Yeah, it's like you said in the beginning, I think it's like do uh, do no harm, take no shit type of uh, balance. And 
<clears throat> some might say. Um, what is it? No masters above, no slaves below. Yeah, bro. But yeah, uh, maybe you could. Yeah, let's. We'll 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 continue. We'll put a pause on the conversation and continue on natural law subjects uh, on the next episode. That'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, and in the meantime, folks can check out nattylaw.com. Oh yeah, check that Natty Law out. Yeah, and check out that's Derek's uh, website, but it's part of his. Uh, network i think as well right that's just uh theo lukes and i he's been rocking it and uh keeping me motivated to provide some pretty cool conscious uh material in there as well as like oodles of links for folks to check out as well as you know like yeah networks like black earth productions and one great work network and yeah dissolving the divide and all that good shit. so uh yeah, love Voila. <laughs> <laughs> and see you again soon, man. And uh, see you guys a little bit later. Yeah, Thanks. much love. Yeah. Yeah. Much love. Nature is our God. We surviving over here. Natural. We keep it live over here. So, when we perceive the ways of nature, we remove conflict within ourselves and discover a harmony of body and mind in accord with the flow of the universe.